Hey, I'm Terry LeClerc, and I'm a prison activist. I grew up as an army brat, so you might wonder how somebody who answered the telephone her whole life, Major Miller Quarters, Terry speaking, sir, could end up getting arrested on an army post. Certainly my parents wondered about that. And it was an amazing journey when I was a grown-up and moved to Austin and got involved with all of these wonderful, crazy liberal people who have really good hearts. One of them, Dan Johnson, called and said, would you mind coming over, being a part of the crowd, because I'm having a speaker come over. She's one of my favorite crazy people, so I said yes. The speaker, though, was a Jesuit priest who was talking about Latin America. Nothing of interest to me, but I wanted to help out Dan. And I will tell you that. It changed my life. In Dead Man Walking, Sister Helen says at one time somebody handed her a letter on the street and said, would you mind writing to this prisoner? And Sister Helen said, oh, sure, how much time could that take? And then she said, watch out, God's tricky that way. <laughs> and that's what happened to me. I went to Deanne's place. Father Roy Bourgeois was talking. Cute little curly-headed Irish eyes New Orleans accent guy had come through Latin America helping the Indios with their land rights and he kept being put in jail, 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 jail. While he was there that he heard the other people talking and said that most of the guards were graduates of the School of the Americas. Well that sounds pretty good. It sounds like Johns Hopkins and you get an extra degree. And he found out it's really a school for torturing funded by the CIA and our own government. It was kicked out of uh, Panama and moved to Fort Benning, Georgia. And he had, Father Roy had been arrested along with 16 people the year before by protesting at Fort Benning. So what he was doing in Deanne Johnson's living room was asking, why don't we get involved in that? And I thought, yeah, why don't we get involved in that, Sister Helen? And so I went and I dragged my 16-year-old daughter along and we went to Fort Benning, Georgia, where we were surprised to find 464 of us. And that tells you how much influence Father Roy Bourgeois can have. We had a great party, I must say, at the gates of Fort Benning, Georgia, an open army post. Been there many times. Many family members had gone through there. After a great time, great party, we were silent, fearful, walked onto the post holding a white cross with the name of a dead or disappeared from Latin America, went over a grassy knoll, and had our butts arrested one by one. We were photographed, fingerprinted, kept all day terrified of what was going to happen. They finally gave us a little letter that said, cease and desist, we don't want to see you here again. But the 16 people who had been there the previous year and arrested were sentenced to six months in federal penitentiary for trespassing on a military inst installation that was open. I didn't know the difference between a jail and a prison at that time. I'm, I'm an English professor. But we got these letters, newsletters, from our friends who were there, nuns, priests, social workers, average age 75, in federal prison for six months. And oh, oh my gosh, the things I read about the conditions there from very credible sources, not TV nonsense, young men bashing their head against the bars, bleeding, pissed off the guards enough that they put them in the hole, women who couldn't get sanitary pads. I just couldn't believe it. So what could I do? I'm an English teacher at a law school. I know how to write, and I can learn about the law. And so that's what I did. And for the last 10 or 15 years, I have hawked a graphic novel I wrote. We can talk about that someday. And worked with Texas family members, well, actually people across the United States, talking about prison conditions, our tax dollars being wasted on all of this nonsense. And it fills up my days and my nights, and I love it. And I am so much happier now that I am stepping out, that I'm doing something, and not just sitting back, either ignoring the problems of the world or just whining about them. Nope. Every day I get up and do something. And that's how I'm an activist.